All right. Joining me now is Rudy Reyes, host of the Rude Dog Show. You can follow Rudy on Twitter at Rude Dog Reyes. Rudy, again, want to thank you for taking time to talk to me on One and Done Radio. Sure. Hey, no, not a problem, Ryan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. And now I want to talk some NFL with you today. So um, one of the big, I think, quarterback free agents that's going to be out there, I think we can kind of agree, is going to be Derek Carr from the Raiders. Um, First off, before we get into where he might go, were you surprised at how the Raiders handled that whole situation? It doesn't really surprise me at all. Uh, When you look at the once Oakland Raiders, now Las Vegas Raiders, a lot of things that did not change between that transition, and that's how they do business. Uh, A lot of the reasons why Derek Carr failed is because of the lack of investment on the offensive line. Uh, But the other aspect was that it really belonged to him. His inability to recognize a cover two, uh, not able to get the ball in a timely fashion, enough to where you're going to beat that corner, you're going to beat that nickel uh, to basically interrupt those passing lanes. He's thrown an interception. And, of course, there's never a good time to throw an interception. I don't care who you are or what team you play for. Uh, but he certainly had, had shown that during his one postseason uh, run at a uh, guy under center f- for the Raiders. So I don't believe it was – it could have been handled any other way. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I look at the Raiders and think to myself, who do they have? Stidham? Yeah. I mean, you feel like you've been stood up by Stidham. Uh, in, in now we're kind of heading towards the NFL combine, which is going to Indianapolis this week and into the weekend, uh, which obviously the Raiders are very interested to see what quarterback shine. And there's a lot of options there, a lot of options, including free agency which is bound to happen uh, a lot sooner rather than later. So the Raiders doing about things the right way has never really been their moniker. Uh, But with that being said, I think Derek Carr was more eager about stepping outside of that zone to do something a little bit different. And now he's taking his time and I don't blame him. Yeah. And that's the Raider way. Uh, Now, where, where do you think he could go? There's a lot of options right now. I mean, Indianapolis uh, obviously is an option. New New Orleans is an option. Um, gosh, I mean, he's had talks with lots of teams. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see him in a Buccaneers uniform trying to plan for a post-Tom Brady exit uh, there with, with the Buccaneers. And one thing that I do know about the Buccaneers is that they really like, they really like Derek Carr. Uh, but Derek Carr is one of the hottest expected free agents and now one of the hottest free agent a- acquisitions by any given team. I don't think they're going to give up a farm for him. Um, th- they may want to give him some security. When I say security, I mean monetarily in a one-fold and a two-fold and offensive line, a really good offensive line. And that's what Tom Brady had in Tampa Bay. So it would not surprise me to see that actually uh, transpire. But again. You look at the New Orleans Saints, very solid offensive line. If, besides some patchwork they had done last season, um, you know he he could go anywhere right now. I, I it wouldn't surprise me to see him go with Indianapolis with a new regime, not having Jeff Saturday there as a head coach. Um, of course, we all know that that coaching carousels go you know first and foremost. It would have been interesting to see him go to a team that desperately needed a starter. Of course, we can always say that Watson in Cleveland is the elementary answer, no pun intended, uh, because he is. He's going to be that guy. So Derek Carr, hard to say where he could land, but I think his best fit would either be in in, in Nolens or in Tampa Bay. For my sake, I hope it's not the Colts. And just because I'm a Colts fan, so – I am I'm t- personally for me I'm tired of going down this veteran QB route. Um you know I we've done it with Rivers, Carson Wentz, Kobe Brissett at one point like we've just and then Matt Ryan like it's so I hope it's not the Colts. <laughs> Let's just say if it is the Colts fine <laughs> but it's, I'll support my team <laughs> but at the end of the day I'm just like I want us to either I rather just draft a quarterback and him be a bust, but instead of me just going to get Derek Carr, I'm not saying Derek Carr would be a bad option. I do think he'd be a great option for us, but I'd rather just 
just stop with this veteran route. I don't know. That's just me personally. Well, I, I think, and, and I don't blame you. The, the the quarterback carousel for the Indianapolis Colts has not been the absolute best, to say the very least. No. And the decision making process of who they pull in, who they bring in, to be the heir apparent, um, not not as apparent. And, yeah. and and with that, I, I just believe that the front office really needs to think this out thoroughly. I believe they're going to draft a quarterback. Um, there are some guys uh, in, in the first round that deserve a look. Um, but again, you always want to test the free agency market first. If it all fails and you've done your due diligence, you've had the interviews, you've had the conversations, um, scouts should be reporting back to the mothership yeah. to say, this guy's great. We've had a conversation at the senior bowl. I was trying to get J- Jim Nagy on the rude dog show. And I should, uh, I should uh, fail to fail to mention that Jim will be on Thursday at 5 PM okay. Pacific time. So uh, maybe I'll have you jump on that as well. We could tag team and ask Jim some questions in regards to the combine. So, to. Um, but I, I, I think the Colts would be better suited to really think this process out before shooting from the hip to get anyone in there. We've seen Ursay do it with Jeff Saturday, by all means, you know, I understand that, that Jeff Saturday means a lot to that franchise, but I think more so in a non-coaching capacity than he does or would be as a head coach for the Colts. Yeah. Now, the route that I want, again, you brought it up, the Colts hopefully draft a QB. So let's talk about the NFL draft. Um, there was a report that came out yesterday that the Chicago Bears were thinking, were like, listen, you're probably listen to some offers for the first overall pick. Um, and then uh, prior to that, there's some stuff in prior reports and who knows fake or real, whatever that people that the bears should trade Justin Fields and just go with Bryce young. Yeah. what I, I see you're shaking your head. Clearly you don't, there's a lot either. of smoke. There isn't yeah. a lot of fire. There's just more smoke than fire in, in that. And I say that I, I've had this conversation on my show before uh, in that you don't trade a number one pick off for a number one pick. You just right. don't do it. When you look at the front office, when you look at the coaching staff, the decision-making processes uh, and how they've handled certain contractual situations. I mean, are they still paying one particular quarterback by the name of Jay Cutler still? I think the last year of an actual contract <laughs> that was left over, right? So I think, so, yeah. think about the financials haven't been the best, but nor has the decision-making to release players like Roquan Smith sending him over to Baltimore. We've seen that happen. So questionable financial moves, more so questionable from the guy starting under center. I think you stick with Justin Fields. You see what he has in the next couple of years. At least let his rookie contract run out before you kick the tires yeah. on another first-round pick. Now, by all means, I'm not going to suggest that there are no great quarterbacks in the upcoming draft because there are quite a few of them. The problem that I have is that you already have one right? and you need to treat, treat him, treat his mentality, his athleticism, his ability to want to win his, his dire pursuit of winning. No player is going to go on any given NFL field, NBA court uh, or, or a tennis clay or what have you to lose. They're all there to win. Uh, and I think that's, that could very well be the case if they give Justin Fields the right tools, not only from a football acumen standpoint, but giving him some weapons. And I think the Bears should use that first round pick uh, accordingly. Now, if they were to go backwards and they were to draft down, I think they there there is some meat on the bone if they decide to go ahead and do that, which if you're going to go that direction, if you're the Bears, I would draft down. I would send yeah. that first round I would spread it out to the second, the third, the fourth, maybe even a sixth round ladder pick and see what you get. You got, you, you're going to get a lot of guys who are hungry, solid defensive guys from Georgia who had already won a state, you know, already won a championship um, mm. on the next, you know, the back-to-back championship, you know, <laughs> player. How do you not want that? Right. So uh, again, there, there's a lot of meat on the bone. I, I just, need to know that the bears are on the right page. And I think it's for the benefit of Justin Fields if they stay with that number one, or if they trade down. Yeah. I think, I think when it comes to the number one pick, unless there's a prospect that they say, you know, we got to get this guy, then you, then you fine, but you might be able to, you might be able to trade down and still get that guy. 
That's um, that's exactly right because yeah. teams may be looking at someone else. It, it's hard. It, it's nearly impossible to anticipate what other teams are going to do, especially NFL draft. And I've been to quite a few of them at this point. And one thing I do know is Kenny Pickett broke the mold last year, being mm. the the. The, the the twentieth you know uh, some odd pick in the first round, which broke the quarterback more. But he else five top defensive picks for one, two, three, four, and five. Respectfully, um, I just think that you could see a lot more of that um, if you are the Bears. Now, if the Bears decide to do that, I would trade with the Colts and say, "Give me X, Y, and Z and ABC. Mm-hmm. You can have the first round pick." And if I was if I was them, not the bear, if I was the Colts, uh, I would uh, I would test that market and take that first round pick and go grab me a quarterback in the first round. I just hope we don't give up the farm to do that. <laughs> if we do, yeah. I uh, now let's just say let's just say the the order stays the way it does. Bears don't trade back, and Texans and everyone stays the same. No, let's just and let's say the Texans. Who should that franchise draft as their quarterback? You think? Oh man, uh. <laughs> it's it's honestly it's not as easy as it like it once was at one point. No, no, there there isn't, and I say that because Mark Robinson is a consensus number one first draft pick overall. I mean, he should be that guy. Um, the problem is, is that I just don't see that. Cardinals were four and thirteen in the, in twenty twenty two. Um, didn't do that much better. You know, the four, four, 12 and one, how do you end up with the one other than the tie, obviously. Right. Uh, yeah. so I, I, I look at this and think to myself, Houston, Texas, three, 13 and one. I think they tied in the NFC South for the Colts to end up with that, with that one tie. They sure um, did. <laughs> they, they, they need more depth. Obviously they need a QB. They need some offensive linemen. They need some defensive linemen, maybe a couple DBs, uh, I think the quick answer would be to to give Derek Carr what he needs, and you have a you have a franchise quarterback. Hmm. That's a good option, actually. Right. So if they do that, of course, there's not going to be anybody else out there readily available, mm-hmm. almost in a plug and play. We thought Matt Ryan was it. When I seen Matt Ryan go to Indianapolis, I thought to myself, they're going to the NFC South. That was the first answer that I made that was like the announcement of announcements, but the Houston Texans need a quarterback a lot worse. Well, I don't say a lot worse, but I'd say maybe by a few wins worse than Mm -hmm. the Colts. And I think the Texans could take advantage of that. Um, I don't blame Derek Carr if he doesn't want to go play with Houston, uh, because it's not going to end up very well. But before you do that, you have to solidify a couple of things. Front office not making the best decisions, allowing coaches to be general managers and head coaches, also not a novel idea. Uh, and <laughs> thirdly, uh, you want to make sure that if you're going to do that, that you have all those dots lined up in a row. Um, and I, I think they should uh, they should look into the o- Ohio the Ohio State bag and pull themselves out a quarterback. Uh, and I think that they. That they very well could, yeah. I mean, again, like with all these quarterbacks, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, even what like it's it's this is compared to last year, this quarterback class is by far better than last year's class. Last year's class, oh, by yeah, far, was, yeah. I just, I, I made a bold prediction that there was only one QB selected in that that class and in the first round, and there sure was. Um, now, so. Out, now we had some obviously some coaching hires. Texans was one of them after they fired a coach after one year again. Um, out of the five coaching hires, who do you think is going to have should have immediate success? I guess let's go should have immediate success. I would, you know, I questioned this, and I think a lot of people didn't really question it the minute his name was brought up in, in the conversation. We're talking about Sean Payton, and and I say that because. Out of all the head coaches, he's the only one to have won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And he did that with Drew Brees. Now, Drew Brees, coming over from then San Diego Chargers, um, by far the worst thing that the Chargers could have ever done was let Drew Brees go. We all know that in the history books. His numbers don't lie. Numbers never lie. Um, But Sean Payton can revamp and revise that offensive line that Russell Wilson is going to need so that way he can cook without burning. 
<laughs> okay. Nobody wants a burnt dish. Everybody wants a nicely well cooked dish and served yeah. hot, not burnt. I uh, I, and I, I think Sean Payton can certainly prove uh, everybody right. And I think Russell Wilson would be the one best served with that dish yeah. to work right off the bat, plug and play mode, and let's go. I agree. I think uh, I think about all the teams. They have good weapons for for receivers. They have a, They should when everything's clicking. Should have a good offense um, and defense. You know, well, you know, we'll see. I mean, they, I know they they got some talent there too. I do think that that could be the best team, the most improved team from this past year. Sure, absolutely. And they the, the Broncos need to beef up on that defensive line. They need yeah. to get rid of aging players. Um, they also need to give Russell Wilson an offensive line, maybe a guard, um, but you need more wide receiving weapons. Cortland Sutton's, you know, great and all, but you need much more than that if you plan on making any type of playoff run at all. When I say playoffs, I, I'm not going to pull the the card out of the hat to say that the Broncos are going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's a long season ahead uh, and a lot of doing things right that had not been done right with the prior regime. So I think Sean Payton would have the most immediate success uh, for, for for the Broncos. I think the the other one that I'm kind of interested in is is Frank Reich for the Carolina Panthers, and I say that being a former head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Again, an organizational failure on the part of the Colts mm-hmm. to not give Frank Reich what he will he will need and what he continues to need and that's another conversation for another time Jim Ursay uh, continues to shoot from the hip especially with the Jeff Saturday hire didn't yeah. follow the Rooney rule and everything therein however um I, I think Frank Reich being the first player to play for the Carolina Panthers first quarterback under center for them in their history their 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 young history I'll say that um certainly brings a level of comfort to the quarterback mm-hmm position uh, he should be his own quarterback coach and head coach right uh carolina is a work in progress uh in, in the nfc uh, south uh but i think frank reich will be able to turn that ship around a lot sooner than i think other people expect but i think that was a fantastic hire yeah i like the hire too i think it's a good young team around him as well that they will probably i would imagine they're going to at least look into the quarterback position don't know how to feel about sam darnold or even matt corral um but there are some options that they can look at as well i i, I do like matt corral i just don't think yeah. he's given a fair shot <clears throat> as far as sam darnold is concerned i don't know what to think of sam darnold <laughs> anymore and, and i say that because i had interviewed him when he was drafted um in in 2018 and i had interviewed josh rosen and got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals. I think yeah. he's now on his sixth NFL team, seventh NFL team in a backup capacity somewhere out there in Never Never Land. I honestly um, don't know where he's at anymore. <laughs> Sam Sam Darnold. I don't know where Sam Darnold is at anymore. I mean, he was great at USC. There's no doubt about it, with the big arm play and capabilities. And you know, I'm from Southern California, so when you talk about Sam Darnold, Pac-12, you know, days, and uh, obviously that's going to change the landscape with you know a larger big big 12 conference and you know and all that I, I just think that sam darnold may be the answer on a temporary basis but i believe they really need to draft a quarterback i do tim uh all right last question then we'll have some fun if you're open to that um fun what's that i don't know so, what fun is, <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, fun? <laughs> so obviously there's eight division winners in the nfl last season there's going to be some change. Who's one team that you can think of right away that probably will not win a division next year? Oh, gosh. That's going to be tough. Um, Do you, I can give you the division winners if you want them right now. If you want them. So you got Buffalo, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Kansas City, Philadelphia, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, San Francisco. Minnesota. No. I think I think Minnesota's got some rebuild questions coming, and I know that cousins, uh, brothers, uncle, sisters, dad's mom on his half brother's side, you know, you really have to wash your hands of Kirk Cousins, and I, yeah, I, 
<laughs> I've said this for years in that it was a bad decision. It was a you're giving them all this upfront money, which is good for your cap from a financial mm-hmm. perspective. That's great, but from a player's perspective, not being able to get the ball downfield where he needs it to go, where the Vikings need it to go. I, I just don't believe that he, in all infinite wisdom that Kirk Cousins has, I just don't think he's that great of a quarterback. And they were exposed big time oh, yeah. last year, big time. Yeah. Um, so I, I just don't, I just don't see it. I don't think they're built for the long run yet. Uh, I think there's a lot to prove, not only defensively, but offensively as well. Uh, and I would start looking at quarterbacks uh, for the Minnesota Vikings um, in this upcoming draft, if not free agency beforehand. I Yeah, I am the same, I feel the same way. I I don't think they'll win. And I do. And I think a reason why I don't think they'll win next year, too, is because of the Lions. I think the Lions are a team such on the rise. And, you know, it looked like at a point, oh, they're going to move off Jared Goff. But now it's like, looks like Jared Goff's the guy, could be the guy, as long as you keep building around him. But it's a good, I mean, it's a fun team to watch. I think they could be the contender for the NFC South or North, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So. I, you know, I, I don't know. Like I said, Minnesota Vikings <laughs> just haven't really done and that's why a whole too. lot for me. <laughs> and, 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 and like I said, <clears throat> when, when I look at the Vikings and I look at some of the, some of the play calling, now that you, you have a first year head coach in there, the Zimmerman era is now done and over with. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think he's done a phenomenal job uh, the, this past season uh, to show that Minnesotans, if no one else, does uh, care about the Minnesota Vikings and where their positioning yeah. is in the NFC. Uh, but I think that um, and, and, and unless Rogers, Aaron Rodgers decides to play in 2023, um, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not a fan of Aaron Rodgers either, but I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's only because of the inoculation versus vaccination thing. And right, then yeah. him, hiding in the closet temporarily until he figures a way out wherever the, the crease light shows. I mean, I don't know. He, he's emerged. Yeah, he's alive. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> finally breathing, I guess, but I, I would, I would trade him off, especially if he's not going to play. I agree. Uh, okay. So now I'm sure you're familiar with my show. Now I like to do some Q and a, um, with that, I do with Twitter followers, but this will just be Q and a with Rudy Reyes. <laughs> uh, I got five questions. So, uh, let's, let's have some fun. So, uh they're they're pretty simple nothing too crazy uh what's your favorite ice cream flavor rainbow sherbet Ooh, okay interesting um i'm a sherbet guy from the old school i like it used to go into thrifties and go grab a scoop and you know stick thrifties. it on the cone that's the name of the place it's now known as rite aid oh okay <laughs> most people don't know that <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh okay so Hypothetically, let's just say you commit a crime. Now you're on death row. <laughs> Sorry. All right. What would your last meal be? Uh, do I get dessert? Sure. <laughs> let's do. It. I mean, you're on death row, man. You could have whatever you're gonna have. Salisbury to steak. Okay. And a side of uh, rainbow sherbet. Rainbow sherbet. As, as nice. My dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, ketchup or mustard or both. I can't eat ketchup, so mustard is my is is my go to. And if, if they do not have mustard, for crying out loud, I'll a not go back. But secondly, look for a side of ranch before I decide to leave the premises. I like that. You can't you can't eat ketchup. No, it's way too acidic. Oh, okay, I gotcha. I can't do mustard. I just can't. I just 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 a taste for me. I just it's I can't natural. Get behind. It's yeah. natural. I can't get behind it. <laughs> um, what's your who was your favorite athlete growing up? Wow. Um, well, I'm I'm from LA. Um, I've had very unfamiliar um, pick, fickle fans around Rams fans, Raiders fans. Um, it'd have to be Terry Bradshaw, only because they played in the Coliseum yeah. um, against the Rams and beat them handily. Um, it, it, it it would be Terry Bradshaw, the blonde Love bomber. It. Nice. Mine is Peyton Manning. Just he got he's the reason I got into football. I met Peyton Manning. Did you? I did. I met him at the 2018 SB Awards. He was a host. Yep. And That's he right. had roasted Kevin Durant. Yes, he did. That very, very famously. 
And it was all over. Lights were down. People were starting to roll the food out that, you know, people were just kind of picking at here and there. And, and I'm at the water cooler. Of course, everything starts at the water cooler. Let's mm -hmm. let's not forget that. So I turn to my right. I have a cup of water. I dropped that cup faster than lightning hit the ground. I ran over there and, and I opened the door for him. I said, Peyton, I said, hey, I just need a photo with you. Can I get a photo? He said, all right, hurry up. I'm leaving. Oh, so I go back at my photo. I get my camera, come back and took a photo. And I, yeah. Oh man. That's funny. That's good. Uh, God, I'm jealous of you that you got to meet him though. I would have, he was, was so cool. Yeah. He, yeah. He was so nice. I would scream like a little girl and just said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can uh, hear it now. <laughs> now, um, I guess this is a kind of a two part question, but only if the first one said yes. Did you watch Dragon Ball Z growing up? Uh, I'm a little old to watch Dragon Ball Z. Really? You don't uh, look a day over 25. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're All right. To kid. No, uh, the, no. The, the stuff that I had growing up consisted of Saturday morning cartoons. So you had uh, Scooby-Doo. You had okay. Popeye. You had uh, Looney Tunes. And you had Tom and Jerry. Okay. Okay. So. I'm from of, that school. <laughs> I, I mean, I like, this, I like that school too. So what was your favorite show out of those Saturday movie cartoons? It had to be Scooby. Um, yeah. And and I learned how to mock Scooby so good that I'd walk around the house and say, hey, Dilma. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was... Oh, my God. That's great. Oh, Rudy, that was awesome. Um, I took, it took a long you... time to figure it out. How to do it. <laughs> did you uh, watch? There was like a like a teen Scooby Doo. Did you watch that too, or just the only when they were adults? Um. Well, I, I know that they were. They kind of went retro to yeah. get you know kids to do it. I, I didn't watch that version. No. It was an. It, it was a teenage version, is what it yeah. what it really was. Yeah. It, it was. I just couldn't really. I, Daphne I, I, was. You know, Daphne and Velma was Velma, and you know, they were they're just teenagers, jinkies. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> Which is kind of a staple, you know, for her to this day. Always and always losing her glasses. Always known yeah, for losing those exactly. glasses. You're on your head. <laughs> they're right, they're right in front of you. Don't step on them. Uh awesome. Really. Now, for those that have not listened to your show or don't know where to find you, tell them tell them where they can find you and everything about you. Gosh, I hope they can find me. I'm at the rude dog show.com. That is the rude dog show.com. All one word. You find me on Twitter at rude dog Reyes. You can go. And find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Rudy R. Reyes, um, basically anywhere and everywhere. Uh, you can go to my website and see all the cool stuff and cool people I've met and had a chance to speak to uh, in and around the NFL. And, uh, yeah, I have a couple guys at the Combine. They'll be there tomorrow um, doing some interviews with some players. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of good stuff. I um, had a – a full show last night had a couple sponsors and yeah. So things are, things are moving. Things are shaking and baking. Now that the NFL season is upon us officially upon us. Now that we have the combine. So Love yeah. It. Love it. Awesome. He is again, Rudy Reyes of the rude dog show. Follow Rudy on Twitter at rude dog Reyes. Um, thanks again, Rudy. I, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you very much for taking the hey, time to talk to me. No problem at all. Thank you. It was great. I awesome. certainly enjoy it. You guys should go follow Ryan. Oh. Be, be, because I'm asking, not asking for a friend, because <laughs> I'm asking. I Go for Ryan to fall at one <laughs> Gun Radio. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. This was this was great, man. Thank you. No problem. Thank All you. Right.